What's up guys, it's Taylor. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, or that is the plan at least. But today's video, it's been a while since I've done a Q&A on here. So I figured why not do one? So I went to Instagram per usual and decided to ask you guys a few questions about what you wanted to know about me. And so I guess let's just start answering them. All right, first question. What were other names you were considering rather than Parker? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Parker is my beautiful 10 month old English cream golden doodle and her name is Parker. And we actually both just love the name Parker. We thought we were getting a male dog. And so we were like, oh yeah, Parker is a great idea and then when we ended up getting a female dog we still love the name so much that we just kept it but before parker i think we had a few other options like i think ollie was one of them jeff absolutely hates that one he thinks it sounds like a mouthful of marbles i like the name millie i don't i think that's really it i think parker was one of our first ones that we just to kind that we just kind of uh, stuck with. Who said I love you first and how long did you wait to say it? So I don't know if this is a surprise, but I actually said I love you first and we had just seen Love, Simon and we were walking home from a movie and we just like walked through this little park right actually on the same corner that we met because I was trying to be cute and uh, I just said it. And of course Jeff said it back, but I think we were probably like six or seven months into the relationship. Yeah, I said it first. Hmm. Any shows you've been watching lately? Lately, we have been watching The Outsider on HBO. We have been watching The Trials of Gabriel Fernandez, which is whew, uh, a lot on Netflix. We watch a lot of House Hunters or any kind of house related uh, shows, Bob's Burgers. I don't know, I don't really, we don't watch a, a ton of TV. We mostly just, Parker, Park, what are you doing? Yeah, we don't watch a ton of TV. We mostly just watch, well, I mean, I guess we do watch TV. Jeff is a huge fan of Survivor. I, we both love watching The Bachelor, which if you didn't watch this season, it is full of drama, which is hilarious. We mostly just spend a lot of time scrolling through every streaming service to see if we want to watch anything and then it ends up being too late. Park, can you play with something that doesn't make any noise? Park. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. How tall are you? I am six feet, one inch tall. How do I keep my teeth so white? So I honestly, I just brush my teeth with a whitening toothpaste and that's pretty much it. Sometimes I'll use like those uh, tray things with the gel and like the infrared light, but that's every like, that's, that'll be before like a shoot or before an event or something. But for the most part, I've just always used like a whitening toothpaste and maybe sometimes a whitening mouthwash. And yeah, I've never professionally bleached my teeth or gotten my teeth, like the real teeth, they're not veneers or anything like that. I um, had braces for almost two years and a headgear and all that stuff. So I just keep them white. I take, it was a lot of pain to go through to get them. So I want to keep them pretty. Always wear your retainers too. Someone said, do you want to do modeling for your whole career or change paths at some point? So I've gotten a lot of questions lately about, about me modeling or the modeling industry or whatever. And just to be clear, like I, modeling is like the, on the back burner for me. It's not what I pursue actively full time. Um, when it comes, it comes. When it doesn't, I'm, that's fine too. So most of the modeling work I do is, is like commercial catalog e-com work. So it's not the water this park that's enough water all right so back to modeling so modeling is not something i actively pursue like full time uh definitely not as much as i used to anymore i'm not going to castings and cattle calls and and all that stuff if a job comes in and it's a good rate and i'm available i'll take it but it's not really something i'm actively pursuing as a career some people are like he's not a model blah 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 because I'm not on billboards, I'm not shooting for Calvin Klein, I'm not shooting for Hugo Boss, but I'm 
I'm shooting for Macy's and Target and Kohl's and things like that. Things that still are jobs and that still are real modeling jobs. It's just a different thing than what maybe most people might assume modeling is. So it's not something that I'm like trying to make happen. If it happens, it happens. Yeah, so I, I much more enjoy doing things like this and being able to travel and create content with brands and with Jeff and share our life on here. Someone said, if you decided to move out of New York City with Jeff to raise a family, where would it be? So if we decided to move outside of the city and that's just it, just move somewhere. That could be anywhere. I'm open, big Sagittarius energy. I could literally pick up and move tomorrow and be somewhere else for a period of time in my life. I actually enjoy that. But to raise a family, I think it's important to be around other family. I've seen with my family and with Jeff's family, how important it is to have people around to help. Like it truly does take a village. So when the time comes for us to raise a family, I do believe we will probably settle down in the Jersey suburbs near Jeff's family and also in close proximity to the city in case Jeff is still working in the city or I am, or just to be close to a large metropolitan area without having to raise kids in the city because I really don't want to do that. So yeah, probably, probably Jersey. From your past experiences, what are some good ways to get over a breakup? Whew. So I have had maybe like, I've had a few breakups. I've only been broken up with one time and that was tough, but getting over that, hindsight is 2020. So any advice I give right now, I wish someone would have told me back then. But first thing is it's not the end of the world. Second thing is it's always going to get better. There's no, like, it's so funny. I feel like if you ask anyone about a breakup and they look back, like sometimes it does feel like your life is over and it, I promise you it's not. Um, things get better, you'll find the better option, you'll find someone that's better for you and treats you the way you deserve to be treated. But what did I do when I was getting over that breakup? I literally took a very different approach than most people. I quit my job, I moved completely outside of where I was living at the time, and I started basically an entire new career path. So that was when I moved to Miami and I started modeling full time and never looked back. So that helped me, it kind of helped me get out of an area that reminded me a lot of that person or situations that I had put myself in for that person, and that's it. So what I did was just move over, move, and kind of start over and reevaluate things. But that's also because I didn't have a ton of friends where I was living at the time, so it was just easier for me to kind of start new somewhere else that didn't remind me of the breakup. Someone said, what has been the most life impacting lesson you've learned over the past year? That's a big one. So the past year has been absolutely a roller coaster for me um, in terms of work, in terms of my mental health, in terms of relationships, in terms of just literally everything. But I think the biggest thing that I learned in the past year was that it is A, okay to ask for help when you are not feeling yourself. It's not always something you can fix on your own, which I tried to do for a long time, and we can talk about that in another video. But another thing that I learned in the past year is that, yeah, it kind of goes in line with mental health that it is okay to ask for help. And if medication is the best thing for you, then you should pursue that. That's something I really pushed away for a really long time. I thought I didn't need it. I thought I wanted to, you know, fight my own demons and, and deal with everything on my own. And that I explored other options, I explored some medications and I have never felt better. And I truly feel like myself again. So that was something that I just took the leap to try. If it hadn't worked, I would have stopped obviously, but it was something that is working for me. And that's something I learned in, over the past year is that you know, if you need help to explore the options that, you know, explore all the options so you can be the best version of yourself. What are your professional plans for the next five years, including your plans for your YouTube channel? So next five years, I will be 31. That's crazy. Five years. Whoa. I think just continuing to do this as long as I can is, is really a goal. And ideally it takes Jeff and I to places around the world. I love traveling. It's like truly my biggest outlet, my biggest creative. I, get, I feel the most creative and most alive when I am traveling. But I really honestly, with the YouTube channel, I want to share as much of our life as we feel we want to. So, you know, when we do buy our first home, and we do remodel or we do, you know, whatever our life entails in the next five years, I would love to share those experiences with 
with all of you because I feel like if I can be a resource or a learning experience for anyone, good or bad, I think that's worth making these videos. But yeah, I don't really have like a five year plan aside from, you know, just kind of roll with the punches and see where everything goes and just save money. That's really the big plan. What are your star signs and do you believe in that kind of stuff? So my chart, my sun is in Sagittarius, my moon is in Libra and my ascendant is Aries. So I believe, I feel like a lot of the, the characteristics that are pretty stereotypical of a Sagittarius. I fall into, I love traveling. I'm not always the biggest fan of commitment. I like to be on the go, but I'm also super caring and super empathetic and I can, and I understand people very easily. But yeah, I don't, I don't really know that much about it. So if you watch my videos and you know about zodiac signs and stuff like that, and I fit what I just said, please let me know. Someone asked, what about marriage scares you the most? Nothing really scares me about marriage. I think just knowing that it's a long road ahead um, and there will be trying times is not really scary because I'm acknowledging that and I know they're gonna come and when they come, yes, they'll be hard, but it's just part of it, I feel like. Nothing really scares me. I think I'm not I'm not scared to get married. I'm not scared to spend the rest of my life with Jeff and, and raise kids and, and have a family. So maybe I'm being naive, but I'm not really afraid right now. <laughs> Someone said, what's the thing that gets you the most excited about getting married? The most exciting thing I think in my future is having a family and having kids. And I think that, not that you need to be married to have kids, but I'm most excited to be marrying Jeff to raise a family with him. I just can't wait to like drive our kids to school and pick them up from practices and do their homework with them and make dinner and just, you know, be a dad. I think it's crazy that you get to like mold these little humans into being good, kind people. And I'm just so excited. To have little babies. Eek. What's your top tips on body grooming? So I get this question a lot too, just because I do have a full chest of hair. I don't really, I mean, tips depending on what you are looking for. So I don't have any like set routine. If I feel like growing it out or I'm feeling lazy, I let my chest hair grow out. If I am going to the beach or, you know, have been working out a lot more, I like to keep it trimmed. But the way I do that is I just use an electric razor and I usually put like a, a cap on it. Whatever you can make like a longer length with, what is that called? It's on the tip of my tongue. And then I'll, I'll do that until it's the length that I want it. Or if I really want it really short where it looks like I actually shaved, I just take the thing that I keep, can't remember the name of, off, and guard, guard. I take the guard off and I just shave it clean. But I don't ever shave with a razor on my chest because it is can be like really irritating to me and I've gotten my chest waxed one time and I do not recommend it. It was honestly the worst pain I've ever been in in my entire life and I almost had to stop halfway through. It was very much that scene from 40 year old virgin. No, Kelly Clarkson! Yeah, so just do what you want and don't feel pressure to have chest hair or to shave your chest hair. Like body hair is very natural and very normal and I have a ton of it on my chest, on my back, on my shoulders. It's normal so people can get over the phobia of body hair. And also, when I do shave my body hair, I don't need you guys coming to my comments and giving, ripping me a new one saying I should have kept it. Respect everyone's decisions when it comes to the hair on their body. Welcome to my TED Talk. Someone asked, what's the most impactful book I've ever read? Most impactful book I've ever read would be A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Just read it, just read it. Impactful, for sure. Someone said, is Taylor Swift my favorite singer? Singer? No. Songwriter? Probably. I think she is an incredible songwriter. I think everyone has the ability to kind of relate to something she's written. And the fact that like all of those songs come from her, I'm sure other people have a little bit of say, but all the songs that are written only by her, like how does one person have that all in their brain? I truly, I just, I could never. Uh, someone said, do you and Jeff want another dog? If you ask me, I'd say yes, um, I would love another dog, but I do want to wait until we have a yard or we live somewhere that's not in the city. Jeff probably would be okay with just having Parker. So we'll see who wins that one. 
put your bets in now. Last question, three best things and three worst things about living in New York City. What will be easier to start with? I'll start with the worst. Three worst things for me. I don't love crowds. I hate being, I hate walking outside of my apartment and being immediately bombarded by people. I'm clearly in the wrong place. So that I don't, I don't love. And it's not that I don't like crowds going to somewhere that I know is gonna be crowded. It's that if you walk outside of your door, you're immediately bombarded by crowds, depending on where you live. Another thing I don't like is how expensive it is. Compared to Indiana, it's wild. Sometimes Jeff and I will look at houses we could afford for what we pay in rent in my hometown and it's literally upsetting. Last thing, the amount of space. So that kind of goes into the money, but the amount of space, it's just like, even if you have a ton of money, well, if you have a ton of money, you have space. But like, yeah, I just wish there was more space. Three best things, the opportunity to be immersed into different cultures around different people and with food and experiences, it's just, you cannot find it anywhere else in the world. Second is the opportunities here are great. I feel like everyone here is doing something and it's always like, it's just a melting pot of careers and, and, and ideas. And I just feel like it's, it's really motivating to be around people like that. And third thing is, the energy. So I know I said I don't like crowds, but I, the energy here is just like contagious, especially in the right. When you're in the mood to feel the energy, it's amazing. When you're not in the mood, it can be like the exact opposite. But overall, I do love it here and I am happy I'm here. I am looking forward to eventually moving out of the city, but right now I think it's a great place to be and I love it very much. So with that being said, I hope you learned a little bit more about me. You can watch, if you wanna learn a little bit more about me and Jeff, maybe we'll do another one soon, but you can watch our other video, the boyfriend tag, get to know us. And if you wanna know about me from a long time ago, you can watch my very first or second video, which is the first Q and A I ever did like almost three years ago. So that's it for today, bye.